Tutankhamun, a pharaoh of the 18th dynasty in ancient Egypt, reigned from 1334 to 1325 BC. Tutankhamun is one of the most famous pharaohs, not for his achievements or victorious wars, as is the case with many others, but for different historical reasons. Chief among them is the complete and undamaged discovery of his tomb and treasures, without any damage. The mystery surrounding his death with many considering the death of a pharaoh at such a young age highly unusual, especially with evidence of fractures in his thigh and skull bones. Additionally, the marriage of his minister to his widow after his death and the minister's self-proclamation as a pharaoh all contribute to the enigma. These enigmatic events, coupled with the extensive use of the legend of the pharaoh's curse associated with Tutankhamun's tomb, used in films and video games, have made Tutankhamun one of the most famous pharaohs, a subject of unanswered questions and mysteries. Some consider this to be one of the oldest assassinations in human history. Tutankhamun died at a young age and was buried in his tomb, Tomb 62, in the Valley of the Kings. Tutankhamun was only nine years old when he became the pharaoh of Egypt. His name in ancient Egyptian means living image of the god Amun, a prominent deity in ancient Egyptian religion. Tutankhamun lived during a transitional period in the history of ancient Egypt, succeeding Akhenaten, who attempted to unify the gods of ancient Egypt into a single deity. It was during Tutankhamun's reign that the worship of the multiple gods of ancient Egypt was reinstated. His tomb was discovered in 1922 in the Valley of the Kings by the British archaeologist Howard Carter causing a widespread media sensation. Tutankhamun was the son of King Akhenaten, Amenhotep IV, and it was announced by the Supreme Council of Egyptian Antiquities in April 2010, based on DNA tests, that Tutankhamun was the son of Akhenaten. His mother was known as the Younger Lady. Tutankhamun became the ruler of Egypt as a child after the death of his brother Smenkar. He married Ankhesenamun, Tutankhamun's death remained shrouded in mystery and unknown circumstances. After his death, he was succeeded by his former minister, Ai, who married Ankhesenamun, Tutankhamun's widow. During the reign of Tutankhamun, a revolution began in the area of Amarna against the policies of the former pharaoh Akhenaten, who had moved the capital from Thebes to his new capital, Akhetaten, in Minya. Akhenaten attempted to unify the multiple gods of ancient Egypt, including the god Amun, into the singular god Aten. In the year 1331 BC, which was the third year of Tutankhamun's reign, he was 11 years old, and under the influence of his vizier, Ai, the ban on the worship of the gods was lifted. There is a prevailing belief that the death of Tutankhamun may not have been due to natural causes, but rather could have been the result of an assassination plot orchestrated by the vizier Horemheb, who some argue may have been planning to seize the throne. There are various pieces of evidence that supporters of this theory cite, such as the marriage of the vizier Horemheb to Ankhesenamun, the widow of Tutankhamun, a pharaonic seal bearing the names of A and Ankhesenamun, as well as a letter sent by Ankhesenamun to the Hittite king requesting one of his sons for marriage after her husband's death are also mentioned. The Hittite king sent one of his sons, but he died before entering Egypt. Some believe he was likely assassinated, possibly by the vizier Horemheb. It's worth noting that historical evidence indicates there were two viziers during Tutankhamun's reign, one of whom was I, as mentioned, and the other was named Horemheb. Archaeological evidence confirms that after Tutankhamun's death, a briefly took over the reins of power before being succeeded by the second vizier, Horemheb. During Horemheb's rule, most of the evidence of Tutankhamun and I's reign was destroyed, which some interpret as supporting the conspiracy theory. Additionally, some believe that Tutankhamun's death was due to malaria, which was prevalent in the southern region. Military campaigns. The country was economically weak and in turmoil following the reign of Akhenaten, Diplomatic relations with other kingdoms had been neglected, and Tutankhamun sought to restore them, in particular with the Mitanni. Evidence of his success is suggested by the gifts from various countries found in his tomb. Despite his efforts for improved relations, 
Battles with Nubians and Asiatics were recorded in his mortuary temple at Thebes, both victories for Egypt. Also, as far as is known, Tutankhamun's military reign was undefeated and is one of several other undefeated reigns in ancient Egypt's history. The extent to which Tutankhamun participated in battles is an open question and has yet to reach consensus among researchers. On one hand, his tomb contained extensive military armament, such as bows, kopesh swords, daggers, wrist guards, maces, shields, and a club, suggesting he had extensive weaponry training. Some imagery, while likely figurative, does depict Tutankhamun as directly participatory in warfare, such as the graphic battle depictions on the painted treasure chest in his tomb. Other artifacts, such as the nine bows footstool, walking sticks and sandals depicting enemies, and a gold leaf picture of him during chariot archery against enemies, also suggest that he was actively engaged in Egypt's international conflict. Egyptologist Bob Breer has argued leaning towards Tutankhamun being an actively participating warrior in his later years. On the other hand, given Tutankhamun's youth and hypothesized physical disabilities, like a speculated cane handicap, some historians are skeptical that he participated in these battles. Yet some experts, such as Sophia Aziz, Campbell Price, and Raksha Dev, have taken the position that the speculations of Tutankhamun's physical frailty are overestimated, arguing that mummy damage has led to misdiagnosis. Instead, they argue that the more rigorous scientific view is that he was physically active and perhaps militarily participatory. Egyptologist Charlotte Booth states that Tutankhamun participated in at least two battles, one Nubian battle and one Asiatic battle, Nevertheless, noting that other researchers suggest that he may have only accompanied the army to the battlefield for moral support, as opposed to actively participating. Causes of Tutankhamun's Death For a long time, the cause of King Tutankhamun's death was a controversial issue, and there were many conspiracy theories suggesting that he was not killed, but rather assassinated. On March 8, 2005, as a result of using three-dimensional CT scans on the mummy of Tutankhamun, Egyptian archaeologist Zahi Hawass stated that there was no evidence to suggest that Tutankhamun had been subjected to an assassination attempt. He added that the opening found in his skull did not result from a blow to the head, as previously believed, but rather occurred after death for the purpose of mummification. Zahi Hawass attributed the fracture in the left thigh bone which had long been associated with the assassination theory, to a break that Tutankhamun suffered before his death, and the resulting inflammation from this fracture may have led to his demise. Modern analyses also revealed that the roof of King Tutankhamun's mouth cavity was not fully formed, and his height was 170 centimeters, with the width of his skull being larger than normal. This led some to suggest Marfan syndrome as a possible cause of his early death as this is a hereditary condition transmitted through dominant genetic traits. The final report from the Egyptian archaeological team concluded that the cause of death was blood poisoning, resulting from the fracture in Tutankhamun's thigh bone, which led to gangrene. Gangrene is the death and decomposition of cells and tissues due to the release of enzymes from dead muscles, caused by a lack of oxygen supply through the blood. Prior to this report, Attempts to determine the cause of death involved the use of X-rays on the mummy of Tutankhamun at the University of Liverpool and the University of Michigan in 1968 and 1978, respectively. These universities discovered a dark spot beneath Tutankhamun's skull from behind, which was interpreted as bleeding in the brain that ultimately led to his death. In a study published in March 2010, it was explained that Tutankhamun's cause of death was a combination of malaria and complications from a leg fracture. The study also indicated the presence of some inherited genetic disorders within the family due to a genetic mutation. Discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb, the so-called Valley of the Kings, located on the west bank of the Nile River near Thebes, served as a burial ground for pharaohs during the New Kingdom period of ancient Egypt which spanned from 1539 to 1075 BC. In this rocky valley, covering an area of approximately 20,000 square meters, 27 royal tombs have been discovered, belonging to three dynasties, 
the 18th, 19th, and 20th Egyptian dynasties up until this day. It is believed that the valley contains at least another 30 undiscovered tombs. The tombs discovered in the Valley of the Kings so far, chronologically in terms of Pharaoh's reigns, belong to Thutmose I, Amenhotep II, Tutankhamun, Horemheb, from the 18th dynasty, Ramesses the Wart, Seti War, Ramesses II, Meremptah, Seti II, and Sipta, from the 19th dynasty, and Six Nacht, Ramesses III, Ramesses IV, Ramesses V, Ramesses IX, from the 20th dynasty. There are other tombs for unidentified pharaohs, and efforts are ongoing to identify them. The construction of a pharaoh's tomb typically commenced days after their coronation in Egypt, and it usually took several decades to complete. Workers used simple tools like axes to carve long corridors and shape small chambers within the valley. Over time, tombs were built on top of existing ones, and the digging of new tunnels and corridors often led to the blockage of passages leading to older pharaonic tombs. This lack of organized planning was the main reason why these treasures remained intact and untouched for thousands of years. On November 4, 1922, when the British archaeologist and ancient Egyptian history specialist Howard Carter was excavating at the entrance of the tunnel leading to the tomb of Rameses VI in the Valley of the Kings, he noticed a large chamber. He continued his meticulous excavation until he entered the chamber housing the tomb of Tutankhamun. The walls of the chamber were adorned with magnificent paintings depicting the journey of Tutankhamun to the afterlife. The scene was so splendid that Howard Carter, holding a candle and looking into the chamber through a hole, is said to have been asked by his assistant, Can you see anything? To which Carter replied, Yes, wonderful things. On February 16, 1923, Howard Carter became the first person in over 3,000 years to set foot in the chamber containing the coffin of Tutankhamun. Carter observed a large wooden box with gold inlays in the center of the chamber. When he lifted the box, he found that it covered a second box adorned with gold engravings. Upon lifting the second box, he discovered that it covered a third box, also embellished with gold. When Carter lifted the third box, he reached the stone sarcophagus, which was carved in the likeness of Tutankhamun. Upon lifting the stone cover, Carter reached the main golden coffin, which was in the form of a statue of Tutankhamun. This golden coffin covered two other golden coffins, fashioned as statues of the young pharaoh. Howard had difficulty removing the third golden shroud covering Tutankhamun's mummy, so he thought that exposing it to the blazing Egyptian summer sun would be sufficient to separate the golden shroud from the mummy. However, his attempts failed, and, in the end, he had to cut the golden shroud in half to reach the mummy, which was wrapped in layers of silk. After removing the fabric shroud, the team reassembled the skeletal structure of the mummy and placed it in a wooden coffin, contents of Tutankhamun's tomb. There were 5,398 items found in the tomb, including a solid gold coffin, face mask, thrones, archery bows, trumpets, a lotus chalice, two Imiat fetishes, gold toe stalls, furniture, food, wine, sandals, and fresh linen underwear. Howard Carter took 10 years to catalog the items. Recent analysis suggests a dagger recovered from the tomb had an iron blade made from a meteorite. Study of artifacts of the time, including other artifacts from Tutankhamun's tomb, could provide valuable insights into metalworking technologies around the Mediterranean at the time. Complete study of the iron artifacts from the tomb, besides the blade of a richly decorated golden dagger, small iron chisel blades set into wooden handles, an eye of Horus amulet, and a miniature headrest, demonstrated that all were made of similar material. Only in 2022, a complex technological and material study of the Tutankhamun's mask was published. Many of Tutankhamun's burial goods show signs of being adapted for his use after being originally made for earlier owners, probably Smenkakari or Neferneferuatan, or both. On the 4th of November, 2007, 85 years to the day after Carter's discovery, Tutankhamun's mummy was placed on display in his underground tomb at Luxor, when the linen-wrapped mummy was removed from its golden sarcophagus 
to a climate-controlled glass box. The case was designed to prevent the heightened rate of decomposition caused by the humidity and warmth from tourists visiting the tomb. In 2009, the tomb was closed for restoration by the Ministry of Antiquities and the Getty Conservation Institute. While the closure was originally planned for five years to restore the walls affected by humidity, the Egyptian Revolution of 2011 set the project back. The tomb reopened in February 2019. Rumored Curse For many years, rumors of a curse of the pharaohs, probably fueled by newspapers seeking sales at the time of the discovery, persisted, emphasizing the early death of some of those who had entered the tomb. The most prominent was George Herbert, 5th Earl of Carnarvon, who died on the 5th of April 1923, five months after the discovery of the first step leading down to the tomb on the 4th of November 1922. The cause of Carnarvon's death was pneumonia supervening on facial erysipelas, a streptococcal infection of the skin and underlying soft tissue. The Earl had been in an automobile accident in 1901, making him very unhealthy and frail. His doctor recommended a warmer climate, so in 1903, the Carnarvons traveled to Egypt, where the Earl became interested in Egyptology. Along with the stresses of the excavation, Carnarvon was already in a weakened state when an infection led to pneumonia. A study showed that of the 58 people who were present when the tomb and sarcophagus were opened, only eight died within a dozen years. Howard Carter died of lymphoma in 1939 at the age of 64. The last survivors included Lady Evelyn Herbert, Lord Carnarvon's daughter, who was among the first people to enter the tomb after its discovery in November 1922, who lived for a further 57 years and died in 1980, and American archaeologist Joe Kinnaman, who died in 1961, 39 years after the event.